So the first Wonderlands DLC was released a few days ago. And it is not good. Not good at all. But let me explain why. The problem with this DLC, ironically, is the lack of content. Besides the new gear, there's essentially no difference to the game. Right off the bat, if this weren't called a DLC, we'd be done here. That is not what has happened. My biggest issue is essentially what Gearbox considers a DLC, at least in terms of how Wonderlands is going to handle them. While this isn't technically a Borderlands game, that is pretty much all we have to base our expectations on. And at least every BL3 DLC released actually had some story in addition to new gear. There is very little world building going on with this new DLC, and if anything, the postage stamp sized map is ridiculous. What a tease to show us the coolest part of the map we can't even explore. And they can't even be bothered to populate it with actual NPCs. They're just random ghosts that disappear when you get too close. Oh well. Naming NPCs and even some enemies is pretty hard, so I can see skipping that in favor of a better overall experience. So they added some weather effects to the arena. Oh wait, that actually causes frame drops I didn't see before. Hmm. Oh, but they also put in puzzles and hidden chests that, oh. Oh, <laughs> those kind of solve themselves, huh? Okay. Hmm. Well, all right, well, let's go back to BL3. Uh, specifically DLC4, which was called out for being noticeably short. It still had a great story and a trippy atmosphere that you could explore. I even thought it was my favorite out of all the DLCs. Every DLC gave us new maps, new gear, new characters, and a new story. Hell, they even gave us new music. That's the kind of content I think that most of us were expecting. In addition to this DLC feeling like a pretty weak and buggy effort overall, it's also just not fun. It is rehashing some of the most boring enemies and mechanics from the base game and tries to tell a story, I guess, but it's fragmented and really just some random voiceover from a new character we don't know anything about. The Lost Souls and Spinning Wheel are just worse versions of the Crystals and Barf Bunnies. Another major sticking point for the community is the cost of the DLC. I can see that wasting 10 to $15 on something that lasts 10 to 15 minutes is not ideal, but if there was a great experience to be had, it could definitely be worth it. Unfortunately, the DLC is essentially a variant of the already existing featured run in the Chaos Chamber that changes weekly. So we basically got more of what we already have, and it feels rushed and incomplete. Now, let's compare this to the first BL3 DLC, The Handsome Jackpot. It was essentially its own game. It had new items, new characters, new maps you could explore, and even a complete story. Oh, and the music was amazing too. The theme was well thought out and worked as intended. It could essentially be its own standalone game. There was the actual value being added to our experience. In my opinion, each DLC after that was just as good and had the impression that a lot of effort was put into making it player focused. Each DLC added new mechanics or tried some things out like portals and voiceovers which eventually found its way into the rest of the franchise. Which begs the question, what is the rush? This game was less than a month old when the DLC was released. I think the only urgent need from the community was mainly solved with a patch that was released on the same day. That alone could have bought Gearbox another month or more to fine tune what is going to be the community's first ever DLC for this new IP. First impressions are so important and they just blew it. No, I think, I think this is all about satisfying investors to some extent. Now, why do I say that? In April of 2021, almost a year ago, a little more than a year ago actually, Gearbox merged with another company called Embracer. Embracer is an investment firm that only mentions the gaming industry in a small footnote on their website. 
while the entire page is plastered with the stock price and their latest contributions to the market. I'll quote it here. Embracer Group is the parent company of businesses developing and publishing PC, console, and mobile games for the global games market. The group has an extensive catalog of over 240 owned franchises, such as Saints Row, Goat Simulator, Dead Island, Darksiders, Metro, MX vs. ATV, Kingdoms of Amular, M um, King, mm, uh, Time Splitters, Satisfactory, Wreckfest, Insurgency, World War Z, and Borderlands, amongst many others. So that is my purely speculative guess as to why this was rushed out so quickly and with such little quality control. They had to show the new boss a return on their investment as soon as possible, and it makes sense considering it's nearly a year to the day the merger being finalized. So it's easy to point out where this DLC fails and why most people are not happy with it. I don't think it's fair at all to call anyone that likes this DLC or just doesn't outright bash it a shill. That is way too far. And honestly, it doesn't make business sense for any content creator to be brutally honest in situations like these. The smart thing to do is let your lack of praise do the talking. Finding flaws is easy. Uh, let's see if we have any solutions. I have two at this point. One is realistic and one is a bit of a stretch. So for the realistic, I say just unlock the rest of the DLC and scrap the whole month long drip feed idea. The damage is done with this already. So let's rip the bandaid off and we move forward. That's my first solution. Second one. This game just needs a takedown. No raid bosses, none of that crap, okay? We need an actual three-act structure with mechanics and strats. Even a beat-for-beat -beat remake of the Malawan takedown, but from Tina's perspective, would be perfect. No new mechanics needed, just a simple three-act structure that increases in difficulty as you go. That would work fine. Essentially, look. We want an experience not an event. To this day, the Malawan Takedown is the best piece of content ever made for Borderlands 3, if not the entire franchise. I've been working on a documentary about it for more than half a year already because I think it's so remarkable. It is endlessly replayable and doesn't rely on gimmicky platforming or puzzle solving for artificial difficulty. Just your ability to shred through the problems of your day while making your way to Wotan so he regrets charging his battery that morning. And don't even get me started on the music. Man, that music was so good and it helped the entire experience. I really hope this wasn't lightning in a bottle. And I think Wonderland's is Gearbox's chance to show us that it wasn't. On a positive note, this drama has made me re-examine why I and many others still love the Malawan Takedown more than two years after its release. The reasons the takedown is so impressive are starting to become more evident as we have much more content to compare it against. My focus is going to be on finally completing this documentary I have been dabbling with for quite some time now. I took for granted the amount of effort that went into the design and now realize that it might not be reproducible experience in any other franchise. So in conclusion, I am pretty much done with Wonderlands for a while. I was hoping this DLC would change my initial thoughts on the game, and it did, but not for the better. Thanks for watching, be well, and happy farming. I love that. Oh, I get it. Hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Hmm, is that foreshadowing?